Welcome to the StockMatter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I am your stock matter, Brian Johnson. I'm making professional trading simple. And we had a huge gap up today, uh, breaking to new levels. And then, as it has over and over and over again, it just it, it can't hold. It, it failed again, uh, came pouring back downwards, only to finish, you know, still up for the day. So it was a feel-good Friday. Uh, for those that will go home and watch the news and hear that the Dow was up or the S&P was up. Um, uh, but in the you know the bigger scope, if you're looking at it from a trader's perspective, it was not necessarily all that bullish today. The action just wasn't necessarily all that bullish. So the NASDAQ really led the way, though, today. Uh, Dow, <coughs> by far, um, behind everything else. The Dow was only up 0.2%, S&P up 0.5%, and the NASDAQ up almost... 1%, which is a huge gain over where the Dow was at, at 0.21%. So an interesting uh, day from the indices where the Dow has kind of been lagging. The, I mean, the Dow has kind of been leading. The Nasdaq's kind of been lagging. Now we had kind of a reversal today. We'll see if that makes a difference coming into next week in uh, which way the markets go. But as you can see, nothing is changed from the trading range scope we've been watching. We did get a break above 10.5. I This time I didn't fall for it. I went ahead and waited a little bit longer than I normally would take a trade and uh, wanted to see if the markets would actually uh, head fake this time or if they were going to hold above this area. Uh, taking, of course, a gamble that maybe it would run away from me in that meantime. But... Um, you know, the, the patience paid off for me in this case, where once again, first part of the day, things ran up and over, uh, but didn't didn't last very long before they quickly fell back below these upper levels of, of 10,500, especially on the Dow. So we're still in this trading range. Really so important to wait for a break and a close below the 10,250, ultimately below 10,200, and then above 10,500 to take a trade in the Dow. Uh, here it is again. Uh, for the week and for the wrap-up for the week, just all sideways today. Did close above the 20-day moving average, but still in this big, larger trading range. NASDAQ on a 60-minute, very, very choppy. Look at all the gaps, as we've been seeing a lot within the indices. Gap after gap after gap after gap after gap. It's almost every day. And finishing the week sideways, not able to get back up and into this rising wedge. So this lower trend line still holding very nicely on the NASDAQ. The weekly here, as you can see, the weekly now that it's done, we can actually take a better look at it, and it went nowhere. Uh, hanging up here, though, and doing this is still overall a bullish sign for the markets, not to see it be pulling back here into these moving averages and staying up here towards the highs is still bullish overall until this area below here is broken and we touch, retest, and eventually break these moving averages on the weekly. SPX, uh, sideways. This one was uh, very strong today. A, a much higher push than normal <clears throat> above where everything had been. And an actual close today up at the 1120 area, 1119 area. Here, uh, the second bar actually came back but held 11.15 and then it, it gave up the ghost too. They eventually fell back to earth and finished right here in the middle of everything. So this trading range on the SPX holding for another week. Just extremely difficult trading for those of you that saw my slope post on channels. Very, very difficult trading in here. To, uh, to make any money on this. So we'll continue to watch the individual equities to see if there's anything that uh, <coughs> comes about there that offers us more trading opportunities. We did see that during the week. Better opportunities within stocks and not within the indices. We've talked about this in the past too, where that happens, where the indices don't give you anything to trade, but the stocks do. Maybe next week it'll be the stocks aren't moving at all, but the indices move a lot. They give you something to trade. Here, just finishing up for the week, um, still not breaking or closing above any of these higher uh, averages, but just staying up here high still gives us a high base look on the weekly, which is still bullish. VIX on a daily finished down for the day, which is uh, no big surprise, uh, but it did finish down 5%, whereas everything else was barely up, 
barely up. The VIX, fear still not a big factor. Everybody's very, uh, I think, still getting into the Yuletide cheer uh, of the markets after the Dubai thing. Uh, fear quickly came back out of the markets after they figured out everything was going to be okay, as I mentioned that uh, that would probably happen. Here we're still trying to uh, work our way below this on a weekly but this is just, you know, same thing we've been seeing in the market, and that is sideways chop action. Not a lot of fear one way or the other. Apple on the 60 continues to disappoint, just uh, still falling apart. Had a 